scroll up here so I'm in the right spot. Nuna, you're first. I need me some water. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Camaro. Uh, 70-30. So 70% eye rest, 30% high fidelity. So... This, for example, is all like high fidelity um, for better and worse. I mean, when you get into an environment like this, it gets really difficult to kind of push areas of rest. And I think in this specific angle, there's no way to really get around it. Uh, so this is Nuna's. So there's a few pictures here. So foliage looks pretty cool. I don't know if you'd made it yourself or if you'd bought scans or. Um, but yeah, this is this detail is, is really nice. So with a shot like this, like this shot to me is very. No leaves. <laughs> uh, is he here? I don't know. Is he here? I'm I'm assuming so. So this shot here particularly is not really useful in like a like it looks realistic, but it's it it doesn't give you uh, anything really to look at, right? Thanks, Camaro. Use mega scans plus a few of his scans. I know that. All right, cool. So really this shot is lacking from compositional direction, right? So this looks really natural. It almost looks untouched because it doesn't have any pathing where like plants have died, a tree has fallen. There's like no clearing areas where animals maybe walk and, and path through. Um, in this shot, you can see that it, the areas of rest are actually up here. These trees are all very dead. Like it's, they all look miserable. <laughs> so they have a lot of branches. Um, and I think maybe if you have uh, reference that, that shows how many branches there are. Um, yeah, the branches are are really high in fidelity. Like there's so many of them, right? It it becomes difficult to uh, give your eyes areas to rest. I guess right here though, it's holding up pretty well. And honestly, I mean, this shot is is gorgeous. It looks really cool. And like, I don't know if you can see. Uh, uh, maybe we'll use this one. Foliage clustering. Like there's there's like stuff here, and then there's this, and this. But there's like families of specific types of foliage and then you have having the logs here this stuff i'm waiting for me to accidentally draw something horrible um getting a path in there would be really nice really really nice like maybe that goes through here or goes under the log there and goes like this maybe this one goes this way just some like little bit of foliage clearing You know what I mean? Just so there's something like pathing wise. Overall though, this looks great. Um, it just doesn't have, it needs a path. It needs like a direction or a story. Right now it looks natural, which is good. Uh, and then depending on the branch count, will will say a lot. Uh, look at reference if you're not, I'm assuming you are. This looks like you've been looking at a lot of reference. But yeah, I think that's my two cents on it right now. I'd argue it's it's basically done. And I'm jealous of your signature. My signature looks like crap. <laughs> okay, so on to the next one. 
Uh, Camaro, I can't answer that on this stream, but ask Hamish. Ask Hamish about it. Okay, so this one, this one's by, is it Schnack? Schnack? Schnick? I don't know. I'm saying it wrong. I feel it. Uh, so this one, so there's a couple things to point out. So the leaves, um, let me get this here. The leaves here are all quite large. They feel very large in, in size. Then the lighting is very dark in, in the shadows, uh, specifically in this area. And like here, it's really dark. So be careful about how dark things are getting. Let me just clear this up a bit. Uh, the detail of the road here feels really low resolution. Like it feels like it's like that, right? So smoothing that out and maybe making it a little less extreme. Don't be uh, shy to add a ton of like branches and twigs and like, like you've got rocks here. Like totally build up those rocks all along the edge here. And then get some, some twigs and branches and just really make it look not NDA. I mean, it's, it's keeping my work life and my, my personal life separate. That's all. Um, so let's, uh, let's clear this again. So compositionally, when you look at the shot, uh, I don't know where this road's going. I'm, think it's going that way so it's hard to see where the road's going and then I think your focal point is the building right so it's this guy here but this is in the way so this naturally has become the focal point I mean this is brighter but I I look at the focal point and go why is this in the way of it does that make sense You basically, you've added some lights in the front. I mean, you could drop it in chat real quick if you want. While you're doing that, I'm going to look at this next one. So this one I really like. Presentation-wise, it looks really cool. Spider webs look dope. The, uh, the ruby looks really cool. You can tell like when you're this far away from it that this feels right distance wise. When you get closer, that's when you see the resolution starts to, to drop. But like detail wise, this looks really nice. Uh, the ivy work looks really good. That booty though, that booty. So the ivy looks really cool here. It's actually a shame that in the front, it's not really as prominent. Uh, very nice. <laughs> It's not very prominent in the front, so I'd actually really like to have some asymmetry in, in the front area with some more of the ivy, like maybe consuming this corner. I mean, it's kind of happening over here. The so the the thing that stuck out to me the most. There's two things. So the gem up close looks strange like something something is weird about it the second man I, it might be the amount that it's refracting i think the amount of detail in the normal map maybe if it was toned down in the the noisier stuff it would probably read easier uh the other thing is the teeth it feels like they're scratched out right whereas like okay we we started zbrush i can i can just do this really fast maybe Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. I, up, I updated the most recent one, so I need to set up my new default. Where is that? Save startup material. There we go. All right. So let's... Uh, no, 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 no. Turn this guy on. All right. So, chisel? Chisel, maybe? No. I'm going to chisel with that and then, like, the intensity, like, way low. Turn the smoothing off. 
So like you have the teeth doing this, right? So just taking these areas and like inflating them. Like maybe if I clay build that up a little bit so that they, they just stick out more. It's been a while since I've been in ZBrush. <laughs> I can feel it. Uh, true dynamic. But yeah, doing stuff like this, I think will give you a better result in the long run, just from the, the depth that you end up getting with it. Man, I'm like trying to, maybe this would, yeah, there we go. Never go wrong with this brush. You lower the intensity, just too low. But yeah, I think you get the point. I feel you. I feel you. All right. Uh, whoa, you're blind. All right, so lighting wise, this feels um, a little bit better. Compositionally, you're, this stuff is still getting in the way. And I feel like maybe if you bring the atmosphere or the fog up a little bit, you get a, a lot more separation. I'd actually think about taking this information and maybe putting it over here or here, maybe cutting into the road so it's more of a hazard and then bringing this element forward or just removing this information, maybe a bush here. So that way you see more of the house. Like it's just not the focal point right now, but you can tell it's it's trying to be. And this one's super strong, man. Presentation's really cool. I think the road is curving to the right. I mean, maybe. It, in that angle, it's difficult to tell. Cobwebs on this are really cool too. I love the cobwebs. This is rendered in Maya V-Ray. Yeah, V-Ray. Mm. Mm, fancy. Looks good. Looks good. I'm excited for the new Aladdin stuff. So Pumpkin King. Small environment I'm doing for intro to the environment art with CGMA. Would love some feedback. We'll add foliage this week. Um, all right. I think uh, so perspective-wise, it makes sense. Like I'm understanding uh, compositionally, you're going here. Uh, wall looks pretty good. I mean, there's this stuff here feels really strange because it's just like you can tell that you're you're stacking it to like mask the. I guess that's a window, maybe. Yeah, that must be a window. It's hard to tell. Anyways, foliage being in here is really gonna help. Uh, just with like bringing the space together. Uh, think about where rocks are going to go and stuff. Cause you've got like all the, the stones from the wall sticking out of the ground. Um, definitely add more geo to this. And then I would think about this curve and like the height here versus the height here and here. It kind of changes as it goes. So it's like, be careful with like how much that's skewing. You want to probably have it the same thickness throughout, right? As I can't draw that, but yeah. Unless uh, design-wise it's different. I mean, I don't know the reference you're going with, but looks like it's off to a good start. Also remember where the stone is and like how it meets the ground. Like that, uh, the ground would have a little bit more of the damage. Do this music though. Hang on here. I'm going with some churches. I'm feeling some churches. Uh, but in general, I mean, it looks like it's off to a good start. 
ground everything and uh, foliage wise, I think once you start getting the foliage in, that's going to be really key to like how how it affects and attributes to the composition. All right, next up, we've got Harley. So Harley is working on rocks. Some rocks for an art project would appreciate any feedback. So always think about rocks. Like I've said this in some other streams as well. Think about rocks as layers, right? Because like the world is like earth and layers in the rock is, is what it's about. So let's, um, let's just do this. gonna eat this up so if you I'm gonna just there we go so if you think about this as like a, a piece of the rock right and then let's just I'm just holding down control and moving this so when you move these around you can shift them around and kind of change their so using two two shapes this kind of looks weird but think about it like you're layering stuff together and then just I'm like where'd it go remesh remesh with dynamesh and we want it like basically I'm trying to melt them together actually let's uh, reset delete all right so what we're gonna do is gonna move this around some more so i'm thinking about this in its shapes and like how they layer together so if i go to subtool and we split group split I'm like, wait, what? Split part similar. So maybe we want just this one for now. So what I'm looking for is like, you want these hard edges, right? That are, that are like the tops or faces of things. And then you can take that and then work with it uh, on top of another one. I just I'll, I'll click on that and then just like make this one another layer of uh let's do another one of these real quick so right now I'm just trying to get some faceting some like side faces and, and stuff like that so once you have those then it's like so if you hold down alt while you're using trim adaptive, you can use it to like pull the shapes forward. You see that? And it kind of flat, it tries to flatten out to where the brush is. Anywho, I think you get it, you get the idea. So by, by doing this, you get these like hard edges automatically. No, this is a, it's a pen. Uh, usually I use a mouse, but you guys always freak out about it. So <laughs> uh, merge down, hit OK on that. Um, watch me crash this. Yes. <laughs> so magic pen. So uh, what was I going to say about that? Man, crashing like throws you right out of it. It's like my brain crash too. So I would say, uh, looking at that, what I was doing with the separate pieces, it is okay to have separate pi separate pieces, but um, thinking about keeping them separate so that you get those hard edges and thinking about the layering. That's 
think about how the rocks are forming and then uh what type of rock it is will depend on how it forms and how it breaks down because it's some rock types you'll see them like you'll see literally the layers chipping away from each other while other layers uh are maintained just because they tend to be a stronger material so hopefully hopefully that helps see i think right now what you need is like like you want this direction, right? So like you probably need to to think about it like this. And then um, you can use that as like a guide. Right? Maybe this maybe this scoots in like this and this. Cuz like think about it in layers like that. Uh So on a daily basis, I don't use ZBrush. That's the that's the secret. ZBrush over the eleven years of my industry experience, I've probably used it for a total of like sixty workdays. <laughs> See, I, I think you're starting to get the the striations in this with the way that the brushes are going. It's very rare to use ZBrush in, in games unless you're uh, doing organic things. You're in an outsourcing company or uh, primarily a character artist. But yeah, I don't usually, whoops, I don't usually customize uh, the tool. Mainly because, at least with ZBrush, that will allow me to get to any computer, and if ZBrush is on there, I can use it right off the bat. You know what I mean? It's super important to be, like, fast and ready to go. So this looks nice. Uh, no, I have not. Well, I have I have used Marvel's Designer before, but I don't like. There's not really a reason for me to. So I haven't in my work environment. Um, yeah, this looks good. So what I really like about this is the material difference between the metal and the walls, right? I think if there was a little bit more information in the metal, roughness wise, that would really help. And it's really strange that there's bullet dents on the top here, versus like at the door because like you would expect like there's this dent here for maybe like someone hitting it with a bat or something but you'd expect bullet holes to be around like the height of people and then the buttons that are on the side uh where are we at here like this stuff's pretty nice the buttons that are on the side it's not really a good angle of them what hang on am i just seeing things there there's like little uh, arrows for like if you're going upstairs or downstairs. Not all good people have, not all people have good aim. Not all good people have aim. What was I trying to say there? Um, I mean, either way, you want to make it logical, right? So like pushing the bullets around here. Like think about the symbolism. It says no future, and there's bullet holes in that phrase oh man it just it's stronger that way make make people have good aim in order to make it happen <laughs> maybe they were shooting at neo i mean there's definitely be more bullet holes then <laughs> but this is uh this looks nice i think i know why uh the buttons are like that though like how they're just part of the normal map and it's because you just use substance designer But uh, yeah, boner, nice, um, cool. People's Gaming, hi all. I mainly modded before this. It's my first go at an FPS shooter map. Is this the is this the link? Right. Let me see. Par. Yep. Yeah, this is the link. With kite demo assets. Nice. So I think, so this is really interesting because like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Thanks. <laughs> um, so this is really interesting because like when you have assets readily available, it, it really comes down to your understanding of like where things would naturally be, like how they would form, 
like with rocks and where moss is at, the scale of the rocks, like how the terrain is against the rock, where grass is, where grass isn't, where flowers are, like making things feel natural while still being authored is quite difficult. So like, for example, this shot is really interesting and looks cool. You've got the water, you've got some like, what's this, like some sand on the side of the water that's going in to the water. So it's like, it's like a little beach, right? Like a river beach. There's a word for that. I forget what it is. Uh, the particles here feel a little strange scale wise. Um, where it starts to get weird is I think these rocks in the back feel very large and there's nothing on them telling me uh, how large they are. So my natural instinct is to think that they're like scaled up or I don't know how far away they are. So like adding plants and bushes on the top here uh, will alleviate that feeling. The grass here being varied in size. Um, if you watch some of my previous streams, I talk a lot about um, weight weighting of like how tall grass is versus how short it is depending on where it's at. Um, yeah, I could go into a whole spiel about that again, but I'll, I'll leave that for, for the VODs. Um, so when you have grass come out and it come out like into the pathway, but then it breaks up and kind of goes away, it's, it's important to paint grass under the, the actual grass cards to help you transition away from that. That way you're not seeing these like harsh lines. Uh, cause it, it, it breaks the illusion pretty easily or quickly, I should say. Uh, yeah. I mean, this one's super strong. I just, I find it interesting because like you're trying to figure out how to think about how these pieces are used and navigating like trenches and definitely look at reference when you're building these. The wetness in here looks super weird. Something is possibly broken. If this is the terrain, terrain shader or the landscape material, like I would look into like what's happening with your roughness. Cause like even with it being wet, the, this looks off. Like something's wrong with the how it's set up. In this angle, it looks pretty good. I mean, think about like seats and stuff down there, and like definitely look at reference. And if you're um, you're in the Discord, right? So there's a guy Lucas. He recently did some trench work. And he's pretty hardcore about uh, World War, or history, rather. So he should be able to give you some insight into what is missing in here. Pretty cool, though. Also, think about, like, where trees are at, where they're thicker. Like, you're going to have bigger trees, right? And then around those trees, probably going to be smaller ones. Like I would expect maybe like a mountain to be over here. Some type of mountain in the distance. But uh, looks pretty cool. Well, we got 20 minutes to go. We're doing all right. Far, buddy. Oh, sorry, before I move on, if this is a shooter map, make sure you think about like um, where the players would start and like how direction wise. Oh, thanks, Derp. Uh, direction wise where players are going to be where the engagements are going to occur and making sure that they have things that they can either hide behind or cover against so you're really thinking about the gameplay like you see it really really well in the portfolios i was looking at earlier the level designer portfolio because so if you if you want to get into level design and layout and stuff like this and just using the propping that's available to you sight lines yes um definitely look at how maps are put together i remember back in the day i would look at the gears of war um strategy guide you know strategy guides were still a thing they probably still are around but they're not nearly as prominent or at least i'm not getting them um the gears of war one was really cool because they did like sketches of the top downs of the maps so you could see and of the single player. So you get the aspect of multiplayer as well, but you get the the top down aspect and understanding of how they pad the players, where enemies were placed, uh, and just figuring out where everything can be. 
based on like where the players are and where the enemies are. Um, see, Mika. Yeah, I'm apparently our stream is struggling, or people are struggling to watch it. I should look into maybe finding a way to better the performance. It's probably a combination of myself and uh, Twitch being really busy on a Friday night. Anywho, I'm going to move on here. I like this. It's a very simple scene. That's telling some story. Oh, man, there's a video, too. I'm going to mute it. Sorry. Oh, that's pretty fresh. Nice, that detail. Mika, it might not just be you, no. I've been hearing it from some other people as well. So if you're gonna get really close like this, definitely make this shell, uh, like double the poly count on it, just because why not? It's quite cheap. I wouldn't worry about it. Five, five, five. Does someone know the phone numbers? Oh my gosh. For anyone who doesn't know, there's a set of phone numbers that are uh, set up to be used by film and video games. Uh, there's a range of them. They will never be assigned to actual locations. So they're real phone numbers that are never going to be used. So they're for movies. So you'll notice a lot of movies have 555 numbers on them. The more you know. Uh, this looks cool. I think um, shadow, like resolution wise and like shadows are kind of like a little on the light side. The material of this is quite dark. Um, and I still think like this wall and the floor are really blank when it comes to roughness. Like I feel like there needs to be a lot of other things going on. Yeah, that Twitch is crazy, man. It's a crazy world. But like, think about fidelity and the roughness. And the it looks like maybe the video compression is pretty harsh. It's getting a little like noisy and, and crunchy around the sides there. Um, hmm. Yeah, think about how dirty it gets down here. That wall is super pristine. The floor looks pretty good from up here, but when you get really close to it, it needs that detail normal. It needs like wood grain detail normal. Phone dirty, floor clean. Yeah. Yeah, and then this one's, this is pretty clean. Everything just needs like a, it's been used pass, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so it's looking, uh, I like the, the simplicity of the scene. I think there could be a few drops of blood. That could be interesting. Doesn't need to be a pool of blood anywhere, just a, like a few drops. Yeah, it's cool though. Phone doesn't look too bad. It's strange that you have it floating. I guess you want people to see the little uh I don't even know what these are called, but the little um, hang-up button. <laughs> what do you call it? A hang-up button? Burb? Burbet? Hey, this is uh, this might be a bit early, but here's the current block out of my environment. There's this one. Oh, man, it's a great block out straight off the bat. Okay, um, really trying to nail a composition in this stage rather than jump in. That is key, man. If you can if you can get it compositionally to look great in the block out, you're you're off to a great start. Like it can only become stronger. So compositionally, this is awesome. Uh, I would say you're probably good to go. Like it looks like you've got your camera angles already figured out as well. Very nice. Think about stuff that maybe you can do on the ceiling or maybe against the wall to break it up. I don't know if like, uh, so it's a sewer environment. So like, 
obviously there's going to be some dripping type stuff, even if it's not actively dripping, just like roughness is a little different there. Maybe some wetness and some, some gunk color, the gunk color, you know? Um, and depending on how old this is, maybe some pipes. It could be interesting. Like if this was a really old sewer, right? But then at the same time, you've got like pipes that are hanging quite low so that they can make their way through the... That could look super cool. And then you have like suspension cables that are bolted into like the older architecture. That allows you to do some of the, the more like gunky stuff hanging off of this stuff as well. And like it turns a corner, right? Super interesting. And then like this could allow for some cool looking uh, lighting on the edges of those pipes. Um, yeah, probably Elysium knows. It's like maybe sewer pipes. <laughs> Man, stream chat must be super delayed today too. I can feel it. Super strong composition and I really like the light projection coming down here from above. Very, very nice. And it reminds you like, oh yeah, I'm in the sewer. I can already hear it like just looking at this. So that's that's a that's awesome. All right, Rachel. Rachel posting, I've been working on a wooden stool object and substance painter. I think I got the basic wood material mostly done. Looks cool to me. Uh, wood grain seems to be going in a nice direction. The materials look interesting. Like I love that you can see the side of the wood material here. Um, let's see. But the stool itself is looking kind of samey. Oh yeah, I totally get that. When you do like the initial, like this is just a initial wood material pass, right? Uh, would love some feedback from fresh eyes to include the reference in the image. Oh, nice. Okay, so what you could do, so you can see how tone-wise everything here is, is pretty uh, same on the value range. But in the reference here, you can see it's, it's lighter here maybe, and then like the edges are a little bit lighter as well. Taking the grain, the grain material you have, and maybe like toning it down in some areas could be really good where like it smooths out, like you're seeing the grain, but the range of the values in the grain itself are more flattened out or like more mid-ranged. Um, yeah, you see how light it is here. Man, this is some great reference. This, oh, sorry. Oh, this type of information is really nice. Like where, um, where nails have gone in and then where uh, staples, like wood staples have gone through. Getting that info in here will really help with the sameness. Um, let's see what else you could do. In the shader, you could do like a dust pass where like there's a little bit of dust on the, on the tops of stuff. That'll help. Uh, you could think about where wood glue would be you know, like when, when things are put together, they get a little bit of a wood glue uh, effect where the glue is squished out a little bit when they press the two pieces of wood together. And then it dries, and it's just like a different color. I wonder if there's a, a good way to – sorry, I'm going to pull this over here. Let's see if I can find an image. So if you Google like wood glue messy, I'm trying to figure out how I can display this without like going to the website itself. Uh, maybe I can just drag it over here. So you can see how like there's glue sticking out. This is a little on the extreme side, but you can see it's kind of like a off white kind of yellow glue that could stick out Dude, sameness is totally a word that gets used a lot 
It's very samey. <laughs> uh, doing some glue like this in some spots could help. Like in here. Um, what else? You could take the... So you've got your AO. Get your AO in there. That's going to be important for helping uh, dif differentiate between like the surfaces. It's like under here that'll help with the separation of that. But uh, I mean, going against the your reference here, I would actually uh, maybe paint it, but then wear the paint away and think about like lots of people sitting on this and maybe some writing people have written on it. Lots of people sat on it. So the paint's kind of worn away here and maybe it's even a little smoother just because of all the usage. So if it's smoother here, then the roughness gets a little bit smoother and then like where the paint is and where it's chipped away can, can help break it up a little bit further as well. Uh, maybe there's a little metal plate that's on here that is like where it was made, who it was made by company wise or the year it was made. Cause going, you're going off of this reference and this reference is samey, right? That's just how it's going to be. But, uh, I mean, it looks, looks interesting to me. It just needs that, uh, that little extra level of, of care and detail on it. And then you're good to go probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then last, because we've got six minutes is Ara, can I post, can I post my friend's work? Your friend should post. So I've had this happen before. Uh, and I'll and I'll critique this one, but it is important that your friend gets like let me let me make sure to read this. He's not really great at speaking English, and so he isn't here. But he would like to hear some few some critiques. Okay, now we're okay. But I was gonna say like it is really important to get the word out on his own stuff. He's watching right now, dude. Awesome. Um, welcome. So even if you don't speak English very well. If you know where to post your critiques, you should just post it. And if you don't know what to say, post it anyways, because someone will say something. And if you don't understand what people are saying, I assume that you could uh, either understand it a little bit or have it translated for you or use the internet to translate it. And that'll be better than not posting at all. And people start to learn who you are. Uh, just because you're active yourself. Like there's someone like, but there's enough people in the discord now that there's someone that saw this and saw that. Is that Ira, Ira posted it? And we'll just assume that it was Ira that made it. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm terrible at weapons. They're not, uh, I'm not good at them whatsoever. <laughs> But some stuff I guess I could suggest is watching out for hard edges. Specifically in this angle, you see some edges that look a little hard. Uh, the other thing I would look into is the material and what like how it's behaving with the lighting. Like this area right here feels really nice. Um, the details here color wise, I mean, unless there's some reference, I don't know. Like that feels really saturated color wise. So that might be a little, uh, a little incorrect as far as PBR values go. But uh, yeah, I would look at your edges, making sure they're not too tight. Um, and then it's gonna all be about your materials. Right now, everything looks very similar material wise. Like there's a little bit of difference here and maybe here looking at um, the materials and separating them out so that they have a different look to them. Cause like there are like polymers that are plastics, right? And then there's some like, uh, or have a plastic look to them. And then there's certain elements that are metal and then metal that's painted with like a matte color so that it doesn't reflect very much. Like that's, I think what you're going for with this type of information here. 
like the butt here could be the butt of the gun. Maybe this is like much softer because it's like a rubber so that it helps absorb the shock from the shots. Um, so this being a different roughness than this would be probably pretty good. This is cool that this folds like that. Um, but yeah, definitely look at uh, like how your, your roughness and material separations are going. Like understanding what the gun is made out of will tell you like, oh, this is a different metal from the body of this gun and they have a different roughness value because they're different materials. That type of stuff is really important for gun creation. Um, let me drag this over here. What's the, uh, man, I always forget his name. He's so good. He's a weapon artist. Wolf something, 3D wolf, art wolf. Um, someone's going to say it in chat. I can feel it. Lone Wolf. Yes, thank you. The guy has amazing hair. So if you look at his uh, his materials, like they're very, uh, at least in his work, they can be very samey. Like these roughness between these two is very similar. But the the detail, the surface detail difference tells you that it's a different material. And like see these like casted seam lines. Yeah, this is he's crazy good but like you see how the the screws are a different roughness than this material and he's getting nice and close in there see he's got a detail normal as well on this god he just keeps getting closer this is scary yeah he's he's too good at his job <laughs> i mean that's terrifying Look at this. This is how you know it's legit too. He's got floating bolts over here. <laughs> Dude, he just goes for it too. It's terrifying. He's like, oh, there's a bunch of bolts there. All right, bunch of bolts. Let's go. But yeah, I would definitely, I would look at this guy's stuff when you're, when you're trying to, uh, get a good breakup of material understanding. Like, see, he's not even like, there's just material differences that are occurring that are making it look more intriguing to the eye. And then like, he's got different types of noise information going on. Anyways, I will link him in chat for you. It is 10 o'clock guys. It is time. I can take a few questions while I'm closing this all off. Uh, if you guys have any, um, and I'm sorry, twitching. I, I had to, uh, end it early and Nick, and others man your guys' stuff's looking good for the challenge you got two days oh no i know i'm sorry don't leave us it's been two hours already oh water is so good had to get used to it again when are you gonna post the last stream on youtube Oh man, that is a good question. So let me uh, let me switch off of this. Uh, we're gonna stream end here. Thanks for coming. All right.